Welcome, everybody. This is the seventh edition of the Codfather Show, and it's, we have a live audience. Today, we're going to do three courses. We're going to start with a Maryland crab cake, and then um, we're going to move into the side dish, which will be a Sicilian broccoli, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of... Um, a lot of bit of garlic. Yeah, a little bit of Romano. And then we're going to do the baked stuffed shrimp. It's my mother's recipe, and it's really good, and you guys will love it. It's a, so, uh, it's a Christmas tradition in our house. Yeah, she's been making it for years. Now Joe makes it probably for what? I've probably done it for the last... Ten? Uh, yeah, ten or twelve years. Yeah, ten, because my mother's 92. So. Yeah. She can she, eat. She can she eat. She can't cook, she can't anymore. cook anymore. <laughs> I'm going to prepare the Maryland crab cakes, and then Joe's going to do the three sauce, which we serve in Acton, and he'll, he can go over that. All right, so we're going to start with a lump crab. This is a Maryland lump crab, and it says it right on the top, and that's what it looks like. So, so we use, we use a, um, a jumbo lump. You can see the pieces are nice and big. Yeah, they're beautiful. Right, so yeah, in that crab nice. cake, it doesn't get lost. Right. Right, so you, you're going to get a nice piece of crab meat in the crab cakes. And they have, they have like, lump crab. They have what? They, they have the they have jumbo lump, regular lump. They have a super lump, all different, pot, all different things, and it comes from different parts of the crab. But look at that. That's beautiful. So, I mean, it's it's it's. So are you guys familiar with the blue crab or the soft shell crabs? Yeah. I think people are more familiar with soft shell yeah. crabs. So this meat comes from the blue crab, which is the soft shell crab before it molt before it molts before it loses its shell. Okay. So when um when they're when they're hard shell, this comes from the back fin, which is right up underneath the the claws. You know. All right. So we have this is a pound of crab meat. Okay, we're going to do two cups, and this is Ritz crackers that we already crunched up. So we're going to do two cups of the, um, the Ritz crackers. Pop that baby right in there. They're easy to make. I mean, it, it, it's, not, it's not that difficult to put together. That's probably about two cups. Yeah, about two cups. Good enough. Then we're going to do some parsley. Okay, pop that baby right in there. A, one teaspoon of Old Bay seasoning. Which everybody, um, everybody's pretty familiar with the Old Bay seasoning, yeah. right? I mean, they, they use it a lot down in, like, Louisiana. They'll do, like, crab boils with this stuff. Yeah. They'll do shrimp boils with this stuff. So yeah. it's nice. And it, I, is, I, is, it a, is it a Maryland product or is it, is it a Louisiana product? I believe it's Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Maryland. And then to bind it, I'm going to use probably about, uh, maybe, like, about a cup of uh, mayonnaise. I'm just going to kind of plop it in there. If you don't want to use mayonnaise, you can use You, you can, can use, use an eggs. egg. If you don't want to use the, yeah, the mayonnaise, you can use an egg will work fine, you know. And then my hands are all washed. I'm just going to massage this baby and put it together. So that's pretty much, that's pretty much it right there. And I, I, when I'm making the crab cakes, I don't like to, I don't like to, um, like, break up the lump. I kind of like to leave it, like, kind of whole. So I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really beating it up too much. I'm just kind of mixing it together. And what we'll do is we'll, fry, we'll, we'll kind of put these together and then fry them up in the, in the uh, pan here. Yeah, you want to put a little olive oil in there? Yeah. And we'll put a little butter in there. I'll take that. Yeah, pop it. So you want to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that them? too. Yep. Yeah. So now, now it's kind of like a consistency, almost, you know, just kind of like, I don't know, if you ever make tuna salad. It's the same type of consistency. Get that all beautiful like that. We, um, we use a mixture of olive oil and butter. You can just use all butter, but what typically happens is the butter burns, right? So the olive oil will keep it from burning. So then this is just bro um, progresso breadcrumbs. You can use any type of breadcrumb. So you can use the Italian if you want. This one's plain. John, should I put that whole thing in there? No, I mean, maybe about half. <laughs> we'll drink off whatever's left. <laughs> so I like to make these about four ounces, you know, so about a quarter of a pound, which is, that's pretty much like what we're looking at. And you need, well, I mean, if you're doing them at home, you know, it, it's kind of messy. I would, I would make these first, put them on a tray, and then... Yeah, then wash my hands and then fry them up. Even, you know, after they're made, if you put them in the fridge, yeah, that's kind of let them firm up a little bit. Honestly, that, that's the best way to do it, is, is let them firm up, get them in the fridge, or even put them in the, um, in the freezer for a short amount of time. 
And I, I'm just putting a little, if, if you guys can see, I'm just putting a little bit of breadcrumbs on there just to kind of firm it up. And, and the meat is all cooked. I mean, the crab's all cooked. So it's, you're just basically, you know, sealing it in, kind of giving it a nice brown, and then you can eat them, warming them up. So that's going to plop right in there. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a few of these together. These are good. So, and then, so we serve a, so, at, hi, what's up? You can use, honestly, anything you want to bind it with. If you want to use panko, you can use the panko too. Panko's and, really good on the outside. Yeah, the panko gives it a nice crisp. You can use the cornmeal. You can use corn flour if you want to put a little flour on it. Can you use Drano? What? Drano. <laughs> Drano? Did you say Drano? Yeah, she's a funny one. You can, you can if you like. Just don't invite us over for dinner that night. There's some days that my wife wants to use Drano on the stuff she gives me. <laughs> Isn't that every day, John? Yeah. So how many will you get out of that? So at four, so I used a pound. I used a pound of um, the crab meat, and then I used two cups of the uh, Ritz cracker. The Ritz cracker. So I think you'll. I, I want to make them about a quarter of a pound each. So, you, but you might be able to get five out of them. You know, with the Ritz crackers and with the mayonnaise and all that stuff. So, do you want to? As I fry these, you want to start with the uh, the three sauce. sauce? Yep. And a funny thing about the three sauce, so at the store, we make, we're always experimenting with sauces. So we made the one sauce. That wasn't that great. People didn't like it. This was the second sauce we made, but we didn't want to call it the number two sauce. As you guys can obviously tell, it, it just wouldn't be that appetizing. So we named it the number three. And it's really, it's really a nice sauce. I mean, you know, yes. with, with crab cakes, you can use a roumelade, you know, or... Um, what I typically do is, is I, I, can mix, I mix tartar sauce and cocktail sauce together. It's really easy. You know, that too. But this sauce is delicious. This is delicious. And, John, uh, who came up with this? Dan, right? Oh, yeah. One of the guys that worked for me, this guy, Dan. And he, he was always experimenting with sauces, and he came up with it. And he's like, yeah, John, we're get, you know, this is, this is going to be the number two sauce. I'm like, I don't know if you want to call it that. So, so People we, do like it, though. People yeah. love it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's good. Honestly, if you just had it with like shrimp cocktail, it's really good too. The uh, the number three sauce consists of 60% heavy duty mayonnaise. Heavy duty mayonnaise. You gotta get that. You gotta get that real, you know, real rich flavor. Yeah. You yeah. The more fat, use, the better. Yeah. It has 20% buffalo sauce. Well, so it's it, got a nice little zing. Yeah, it's got a little kick to it. Little kick. And it's got some barbecue sauce. Yeah, that's we use Sweet Baby Ray's just to give it a little bit of a sweetness and a little barbecue flavor. But I, I'm sure you could use whichever, whichever. Uh, do you use Sweet Baby Ray's? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. good stuff. And then we just whisk it all together. Look at these guys. And I'm telling you, if you you leave that crab hold like that, so good. So what we usually do, the, the crab cakes that we're heating up for you guys, is we usually make them into these patties, and, we, and then we cut them into fourths for the smaller crab cakes so you can just eat them. But if you had, like, if you made two of these for dinner, you'd be, you'd be You're all set. set. You're all set. I actually made two crab cakes for my mother last night. She ate them. And then five minutes later, she says, what are we having for dinner? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> she eats it. And then ten yeah. minutes later, she said, what are we having for dinner? I'm like, okay. She's got a great appetite, but. That's memory, just 92. The memory, okay. not so what, much. What are you going to do? But that's the, that's the three sauce right there. Yeah. yeah, that's good. You know, and it's, it's really, it, it is delicious. I'm going to check what we have in the oven. All right, so that's the first segment. I think we're going to go to a uh, Twin Seafood um, commercial, commercial right now, and we'll be back to do the Sicilian broccoli. Yeah. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org.
Okay, welcome back to the Codfather Show. We're now going to be doing the Sicilian broccoli. Joe's going to step into it and, and start it going. You can explain it, Joe. Go ahead. All right. Go for it. All right. So, um, so, you know, a lot of people like to just steam broccoli and or boil it or blanch it. In, a, in, the, uh, in a, the Sicilian broccoli that we make, we don't use any water at all. We, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take, John's cutting up the broccoli. We like to use the stem too. I don't know if a lot of people like to use the stem. I think the stem is delicious. Myself, you kind of skin it a little bit fiber. like he's doing. You get the fiber. It's awesome. You kind of skin it. You skin it a little bit like he's doing. And, uh, and I, I like to use the, the stem. So anyways. My wife will not touch the stem at all. She won't, she won't eat any of that at all. Oh, it's so good. I know. I know. I think it's the, I think it's yeah, the best pot. Regular, you know, regular so, vegetable. I know. So I, what, what hey, we're going to do. I know what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, what she we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of butter in here. We just get that melted. Whenever you're ready, you can take this broccoli and throw it right in. Yeah. I like to cut them a little smaller because then they can get the flavor on much more of the broccoli. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we just put this in here. I'll cut this one too. Yeah, cut that. Yeah, I always shave off the off the off the outer skin of the broccoli stem, because then then it, it it when it cooks up, it's kind of, it's tender and it's good. I mean, you don't have to throw that away. And I even cut little chunks. Oh yeah, me too. I do you that's cut the best, That's you the do? best part. You do. <laughs> this you right do here. Cut chunks like that. Yeah, just like this. <laughs> wow. Maybe this was Ma's recipe too. I don't know. No, she used to. Cook. There was a woman in here that just. She, she said she used to cook the broccoli until it was really, oh, it was you, and, and really, really, really soggy, like, and, and, oh, yeah, no, that's, that's the way we used to eat it. Yeah, you know, she used to just cook it until it was dead. Nowadays, nowadays, they cook it, and it's, I, my personal opinion, it's not cooked enough. I, I, I like it a little bit, a little bit more, but, yeah, so, yeah, they just, they just well, kind of. They're leaving, that, that leaves all the vitamin in it, though. No, I know, whatever. You know, if you eat it raw, that's when you have the most vitamins. See, you could tell that I'm, you know, I'm a picture of health over here. So. <laughs> I like to eat my broccoli with a little bit of bourbon, so I'm, you know, so I'm, I'm pretty healthy too. Yeah. All right, you can just take that cutting board. All right, so we're just gonna put all this in here. You want to cut a lemon? Yep. Sure. We're gonna. We're, oh, so we got a question. When do you put the garlic in? Don't worry about it. There's plenty of garlic that's gonna go in here, but. The reason why we don't like to put the garlic in first, because if you cook it too long, it burns. Yeah. So you wanna you wanna just get the butter flavor into the broccoli, nice, let it cook. You'll be able to tell when it's when it's um, when it's ready to go into the garlic because it changes color, so that it goes from that that kind of dull green to a very bright, vibrant green. So once it once it gets to that point, then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna heat up some olive oil here. Right, we're gonna use a little bit of uh, fresh garlic. Now, if you don't, if you don't want to get the tang from a lemon, you can also get a little bit of tang from like vinegar. So you you, you want to, you, you know, you have the you have the uh, the richness of the olive oil, the richness of the Romano cheese. You also want to, you know, kind of complement that with a little bit of a zing. You know, the zing you can get from lemon, you can get it from um, uh, vinegar. So th those two things both play nice. I could I could toss this a little higher if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Front row, you might want to stand back. We'll get you some aprons. But and then we uh, then we like to squeeze a little bit of lemon on here. You know, it's always nice to have that that lemon flavor. Do you want a little butter in there? I would put a little. Yeah, butter. a little butter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can you use fresh garlic? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I like to cut it. If you've ever seen the movie Goodfellas and they're in prison and they're cutting it with a razor and it's like really, really thin and then they put it in here and it, and it almost caramelizes to like nothing. It melts. It melts away. It's like making pasta with, um, with anchovies. So like the anchovy, you put the anchovy in, everybody says they don't like anchovy, but you can't taste yeah, it's, it. It's, it's the it flavor. Basic, it's the salt. Yeah, it's, I know it's, it's just, the salt. Yeah, it's just right? introducing the salt. That's All it. right, so you can see the color. You can see the color of that broccoli, how it's it's changed. It's nice and nice and green. 
So with the lemon, right, sometimes if you have a little cheesecloth at home, you, instead of like squeezing it and having the seeds fall in, you can just put a little cheesecloth. And you know what else works too? Hold on. Is a, uh, oh, we could use one of those. Oh, uh, you can use a, uh, a coffee filter. I've, I've done that and that works pretty good too. I took this out, but the first lemon, I forgot that I had it out. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody's going to get some nice seeds. No, no, no. I, I took the seeds out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So now you can see that the, the garlic is starting to, to bubble and it's starting to smell. You can smell that in here now, right? The garlic, right? So once that starts to happen, that's when it's starting to release its, uh, its, its, its flavor. So you just really, you just want that to happen. And you don't want it to burn. Right. There's nothing worse when you, you have all the garlic and you cut it up, say you're cutting it, and then you, and then you, you walk away for a second and now it's brown and, it's, and you, don't even, you can't use it because it will ruin what you're cooking. So you have to start all over again. Right. So now that's why I use, we use two pans. We then go right into there. Nice. And do the same thing. So we just move it around. Yep. So oh. we get that garlic all over it. You can see. Who needs ice cream when you have this? Yeah. You know I mean? Exactly. <laughs> it's perfect. Right? And it's only, it's only 1,400 calories per <laughs> serving. And that's two stems. And then everything's better with, with uh, grated cheese, right? Oh, yeah. Cereal. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't really matter oh, yeah, what no, it my, is. My mo yeah, my mother puts grated cheese on everything. She puts it on her cornflakes. Everything's better with grated cheese. So at, right at the end, you can see that that's pretty much done because... Perfect. What we're also going to do with this, it's going to go into this pan and it does go into the oven for maybe 15 minutes at 350 just to, just to finish it off and all those flavors start to marry. I just, I just didn't want do to. We, not, we don't want to burn that? No. Light it on fire. The camera's <laughs> on fire. So we just added the grated cheese. But honest, honestly, if you're just cooking this at home and you're making, you know, like one or two servings, you can just finish it off in here. You know what I mean? You just, just cover it, it. Yeah, just throw a cover yeah, on it. Yeah, throw a cover on it, cook it another five, ten minutes, and you're done. Yep. So that's the uh, Sicilian broccoli. I mean, it's beautiful. It's going to be tasty. And then we'll take a break. We'll go to a uh, commercial uh, sponsored by Twin Seafood. And uh, we'll be back to do the main course. You got plans? You bet. Fifty million Americans struggle with hunger, but we can do something about it. Excuse me. What's going on? Dinner. Please join me in helping put food on their tables. Together, we can feed America. You guys keep going. I'm going to get the plates. Plates? Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash hunger. Welcome back to the Codfather Show. We're now going to do Josie's Christmas shrimp extravaganza. Baked stuff, <laughs> baked, baked stuff shrimp. Yep. So this the, it, it's beautiful. So uh, like uh, so you guys might know this. Shrimp comes in all different sizes. They're anywhere from like the little baby shrimp where you make like a shrimp salad. There might be 150 count. And then the shrimp we're using here is caught. It's a 1620, which means there's 16 to 20 in a pound. And at the store, we get them all peeled in the vein with the tail on. So the vein, which is the digestive vein, is down the back of the shrimp. That's the one you got to get rid of. There's also another vein here, but you don't need to get rid of it. It's, it's just, it's just a, like a blood vein. That's it. But the one you want to get rid of is down the back. So that's, that's how the shrimp looks. So they're really easy to take the tail off. All you do is squeeze, and it pops right off. And I'm going to cut them down the back and almost make like a circle. Okay, so they're going to get cut down like that, and then you just fold them over. I'm going to take that vein out while, it's, while I'm there, or most of it. And yeah, what was that? Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then they're just going to sit in the tray like that. And, and you just keep doing that. And I'll probably end up putting in, in, a, in a big tray like this, we'll probably put, I don't know, 30 there's, shrimp. No, there's, 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 uh, there's two and three quarter pounds. Two and three so quarter. two and three quarter pounds fills a tray like this. This is huge, though. You know that's a lot of people, um, but we have a lot of people. So uh, and we have two other we have trays. two other trays in the so yeah in the oven know. yeah. So so we're good to go. But um, but this shrimp is nice. This is a uh, this this shrimp is from Ecuador. 
It's a, it's a white shrimp. It's not a black tiger because there's black tiger shrimp, which comes from Taiwan or China. Um, and uh, those are good, too. There's nothing wrong with those, but those are farm raised. These are a wild shrimp. And they're getting, they're getting better. You yeah. know, like they're, they're finally, they have a lot of um, uh, guidelines and regulations that, that kind of monitor that, that stuff nowadays. So it, they are getting better. All right, so we, um, we, we do this with a, uh, with a Ritz cracker stuffing. So, do you need the garlic? I need, no. You don't? Nope. Okay. No, we just, use, we just use garlic powder in this. Okay. All right, so again, we start with a little bit of olive oil. That's just about with everything. You gotta have the olive oil, right? <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not a lot. That, that, I, I don't know. I didn't think that was a lot. I put that on my, my bread, my whole loaf of bread. But And then a little bit of butter. Butter, really, really, we're just using the butter for the flavor. This is salted. But you can use unsalted. You can use you unsalted butter. I mean, because the Ritz crackers, they have the salt, so you can, you'd, be, you'd be fine doing unsalted also. Yeah, I know, yeah. right. So we get that going, and then we like to use a dehydrated onion. It kind of, I don't know, it takes on more of the flavor. You can use fresh onions, you know. I don't like to break into tears in front of a lot of people. So I'm going to use a dehydrated onion. You don't need a lot, but it does add a nice sweetness to the, to the flavor of the uh, stuffing. Shallots. Yeah, you can use, shal yeah, you can you can use, use shallots. Yeah. Absolutely. At the um, at the store in Acton, we use um, so we'll we'll sell like individual stuffed shrimp, and I'll use a, an eight to ten shrimp, which is twice the size of this, and I'll stuff it he's, with exactly the same um, Ritz uh, breadcrumbs kind of stuffing that he's going to do here. But we'll also saute up a little bit of scallops and put them in there. And we do those for the holidays. But, th th I mean, you really, like as an appetizer, one of those is probably good, maybe two. Um, and for dinner, you, you know, maybe two of those for dinner would be fine because they're, they're, they're pretty rich. Yeah. So also to, to the uh, stuffing, we add a little bit of dry parsley and a little garlic powder. <laughs> and... <laughs> We don't, there's, there's no measurement on this. That's, I, yes. yeah, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. You don't measure anything. Yeah. I mean, the only time you have to measure is when you bake, right? And even then. And even then, it, maybe the cake doesn't rise as high as it's supposed to rise, but it doesn't matter as long as it tastes good. No, you got you to gotta use a recipe when you bake. Come on now. Well, Alex does all the bacon. I don't, I don't like to bake. I like to open the refrigerator, take whatever's in there, and make a meal and that's it and eat it and eat it so then you add like to do half ritz half ritz cracker and half plain breadcrumb which makes it you know so it, again like the ritz cracker is very very salty so you know we want to we want to keep the salt down a little bit and then you know, you just you just kind of fold it in. And when you, honestly, once this is all prepared and ready to go, 375, maybe like 15, 20 minutes, it's done. When the shrimp are all white, that's it. But it, it I mean, depending on what kind, one, what oven you have, like 15 minutes, I'd check them. If they need a little bit more, maybe like another like three or four or five minutes, that's it, and it's done. And if you want, at the very end, you could put the broiler on just to crisp it. So, and but you can it, see this is this is you know this is a fairly quick meal. You know, it's not it's not very time consuming. It like John says, it cooks quickly in the oven, especially if you're making you know if you're making a tray for two. You know, it's just a small a small pan, maybe a pound of shrimp, a little bit of uh, half a cup of breadcrumb, half a cup of Ritz, and the and the butter, the garlic, the uh, the parsley, and the and the um, the garlic powder and a dehydrated onion and that's it but you want to get a good consistency here so you don't want it to be you don't want it to be real wet because it gets very it gets uh it, it, it's too much butter so you, you know the, the shrimp are kind of like soaking in butter but you can see that we made a pan 
We made a <laughs> we made a bunch in advance, so that we can just we can just cover the shrimp and you know. But you can see that it's about the same. And you can you make know? you can make this in advance. Like you can make you know like three or four pints of it and just freeze a pint. You, you freeze and I'll tell you when it comes out of the freezer, you let it thaw out. It, it will, it's fine. It's, it, it's, it will be just perfect and you can use, you know, a pint of it. I mean, you don't even have, you could break it up into half pint containers and that would be plenty. And you can put it on haddock. Yeah. You can put it on the shrimp. You can put it Bake, on scallops. Baked sole. Sole. Like um, stuffed sole. Yeah. You add a little crab meat in there and you stuff the sole with it. Anything oh, like that. Fancy. It's delicious. Fancy. It's really, it's really good, good stuffing. Actually, we're, uh, we are selling this at the store. <laughs> and we don't want to over overpower it because you want to taste the shrimp but just real simply on top and you can see this is a nice way to serve a bunch of people because you know you can also do baked stuff shrimp individual you use a larger shrimp maybe um, like Mary said she uses a uh, 8 to 12 or you can use a 6 to 8 but that's like a lobster tail those things are massive um, but this way here you, you just use a smaller shrimp you lay it in a tray I typically use a cookie sheet rather than this, uh, this, these aluminum trays, but these are fine too. Um, and it's just an easier way to serve a lot of people because you just, you just lay them out, you lay out the stuffing, and you're done. And then my mother's trick, Josie's trick, <laughs> is she likes to take lettuce and she lays it on top of the, uh, of the, whole, the whole thing. And she also puts scallops in there. Like John said, he makes yeah, the... He makes the uh, the stuffing with the scallops in it and she puts lettuce on top and bakes it and you know that lettuce is 90 percent water so it keeps it very 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 moist as you're cooking it and uh and it turns out beautiful I'll every take, year I'll take a layer of lettuce. just just one, one 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 across and you can use whatever you know you can use iceberg you can use uh romaine it doesn't matter you know you don't want to use any of those mixes but you know, iceberg or romaine. Bake sheets. Yeah, bake sheets, exactly. Yeah, and it's uh, it's it's delicious. We like I, like we said, it, we've been eating it for oh yeah, for Christmas forever. Yeah, for for and it, we only the, the only time she would make it is Christmas. Right. That's it. Yeah. I'll tell you, and it, and, it was the best. And for a lot of years, we had it for an appetizer. So by the time dinner came out, oh, yeah, forget nobody about wanted it. to eat yeah, anything. You couldn't, yeah. You know, so now because it's really rich. Now typically, what we do is we have the the baked stuff shrimp. And like a surf and turf. Yeah. You know? You don't do the seven shrimps? Seven, seven, seven fish, fishes. The, the feast of the seven fishes? I yeah. Go, yeah. Go where I go. And then we make napkins. Oh, yeah. Homemade? Delish. Yeah. Delish. Right. But anyways, yeah. yeah. All right. So that's the, uh, the bake, Josie's Baked Stuff Shrimp. Uh, we're going to get everything ready. We're going to do a little conclusion to the Codfather show, and then you guys can eat. So, all right. <laughs> Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. All right, welcome back to the Codfather Show. We have everything displayed up here. It's beautiful. It looks edible. I, the girls, <laughs> the girls love the crab cakes, so that's awesome. So right here we have the Maryland crab cakes. We have the Sicilian broccoli. Looks beautiful. Tastes great. We tried it. And then we have the baked stuffed shrimp. Josie's baked stuffed shrimp. We, we made, made you a dinner. dinner. You, you can't, can't refuse. refuse.